Thank you. God bless you. Uh, good evening. We appreciate the grace of God for all of you. I greet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not always we are here. There are times when God lays a burden on your heart to be able to share with God's people. And uh, this is just about one of those days that there is something on my heart that I want to share with you today on a Friday. I know some of you are Christians, wherever you are. Perhaps this is the time maybe you are trying to prepare yourself for the service on Sunday and you are putting yourself in the same mode. I've got something to encourage you about and uh, we want to go straight to the scriptures. I want to make sure everything is moving on well. So we are going to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 15 up to 25. I want you to follow closely. It may not be really something that you've ever focused your mind on because uh, there is what the people think really happened and uh, whatever they have actually written about this man I want to speak about is actually baseless and very unscriptural. So I want you to be able to listen to me closely as we go to the scriptures. It says in verse 15, And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of the names together was about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spake. The Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, who was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as that, that field is called the proper tongue, Akaldema, other place they say Aseldema. Akaldema, that is to say the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms. Now Peter is quoting Psalms 109. It's written in the book of Psalms. Let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and this bishop break let another take. In the book of Psalms it says and let his place be taken by another person. Whereof of these men who have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Peter is saying in verse 21, where of, of this man, he's pointing to some men there. And he's saying these men were with the Lord Jesus Christ when he went in and went out, beginning from the baptism of John and to that same day that he was taken up from us. And then he's saying these people who saw Jesus Christ must one be ordained, he uses, he uses the word must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed to Joseph, to Joseph called Barabbas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias, or Matthias, if you like. And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, who knowest the hearts of men, show which one of these two hast thou chosen, that he may take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave both for their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. He was numbered with the eleven apostles. Father, we thank you for the scriptures, Lord, we are reading today. We thank you for your people who will be listening in today, Father. We thank you for the scriptures you've given us, oh Father. We sanctify your name again, we lift your name on high. For this short time, we shall be here. May you minister grace to us. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to speak to you about wait upon God for he controls the seasons. Much, and I want to say actually much not, we don't have much that has been spoken about this man who was chosen to be Matthias. 
the, the, the man who was chosen to take the place of Judas Iscariot by the name other say Matthias, other say Matthias, but whichever way. This man is for the first time in verse 21, we are hearing Peter said this man was actually with them from the baptism of John up to the time Jesus Christ died and resurrected and he was taken up. But there is no scripture in the Bible that we hear about this man. This man was right in the background and there was something that was awaiting this man. And there was a prophecy in the Bible about this man, but no one, even Jesus, never mentioned this man. He wasn't mentioned anywhere in the epistles of Paul. Of course, Paul had no reason of mentioning him as it were. John never mentioned him. Peter never mentioned him. Jude never mentioned him. And James never mentioned him. But this man is coming in at a very crucial time in Israel. The man is coming in. There is another scripture I want us to read together for you to be able to understand the importance of this man as we tie up our subject matter on wait upon God for he controls the seasons. This man, when Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 10 chose the 12 apostles, I'm using the word apostle because that's the very first time the word apostle is mentioned in the book of um, in the entire Bible, we used to be told, you know, the disciples were called disciples during the time of Jesus. And when he died, they became apostles. That's not exactly true. Let us go with the scriptures. The word apostle is mentioned further in the book of Matthew chapter 10 when he chose the 12. And when he was choosing the 12, Matthias or Matthias was actually among them. Matthias was among them. Joseph called Barabbas was among them. And for one to qualify to be an apostle of the Lamb, he needed, number one, the qualification was, he needed to have been with the Lord Jesus Christ in flesh, to have seen him in flesh, for him to qualify to be an apostle of the Lamb. And I'm using the word, the apostle of the Lamb. Because there is an apostle and there is the apostle of the Lamb. Paul was an apostle and Paul does not qualify in any way to be apostle of the Lamb. He's the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Gentiles by a special commission. But that does not make him the apostle of the Lamb. Now, many people have actually written and said, uh, I don't know where they get that. They come up and say, and Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ was not happy with the choice the apostle made when they chose Matthias uh, because the right person was Paul. That is actually an opinion and that's a tradition. There is no scripture package for the same thing. Matthias was the one that was chosen because even the prayer, it says they asked the Lord to show them among the two. And the idea of taking lords is an old Jewish idea that was right there from Leviticus 16. When they were choosing, when they were choosing uh, uh, the two gods, one that belonged to the Lord, they used the lords. They were cursing Lord, so it was a divine way of knowing the mind of God upon something, especially when there was no prophet in the land. They, were, they used the lords to choose. When they were coming into the inheritance, they used the lords. So the disciples, the apostles are coming around here, and Peter is reminding them of this man called Matthias, and the word he spoke, speaks there in verse 21, he says, this Matthias and Bar Bar Barabbas were actually with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is one of their qualification for one to become an apostle of the Lamb. Because these apostles of the Lamb are again found in the book of Revelation. Whose names appear on the foundation of the city of Jerusalem. I can assure you the name of Paul is not on that city. Because Paul had a different commission by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not mentioned among the apostle of the Lamb. Apostle of the Lamb are 12 because each one of them is connected to a specific tribe and there were 12 tribes of Israel and there were 12 apostles. So when Jesus is choosing the 12 apostles, he never had you in his mind. But when he called Paul, then he had you in his mind. But when he chose 12, he only had the 12 tribes of Israel. And when he's choosing them, there is something the Lord Jesus Christ speaks that's why we want to find out the importance of Matthias 
being chosen as an apostle when Judas Iscariot died and he was replaced. But when James died, was killed by Herod, he was never replaced. I don't want to go into the details of that. But I want us to go straight to a scripture here in um, the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 28. I want you to listen to what Jesus Christ speaks. I, I think we are good. It says here, is it 19 verse 28? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye, ye is plural, ye who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So the 12 apostles, apart from preaching, which we find they are preaching in different places in the scriptures, they had one divine call. God required 12 judges to be assigned to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And the throne of his glory is mentioned for the first time here and is again mentioned in Matthew 25. So when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, Around him shall sit the twelve apostles of the Lamb, and their responsibility and jurisdiction is to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, we are coming to a place where Judas Iscariot has actually taken himself off the scene. And these people must choose one among them that were with the Lord Jesus Christ for their purposes of filling in the position because according to Matthew 19, 28, there was one throne that was going to be empty in future when it comes to judging the tribes. And having a throne less with no one occupying that throne, it actually translated to mean there was one tribe among the 12 tribes that would not be judged and the judging uh, the Bible is talking about is actually an administration. It's not the judgment that we talk about that being judged for being right or wrong, partly that, but it is an administration. And this is the way God was, Jesus Christ was devolving his responsibility to make sure that every tribe has one judge. You as a Gentile cannot be judged by any of the 12 because these specifically have to deal with the 12 tribes of Israel. And when Jesus Christ started choosing the apostles, the Bible tells us there were many people that were attracted to Jesus. We, we, we are told of 5,000, we are told of 7,000, we are told of 72 that Jesus sent. And I want to tell you, the Bible tells us, this man started walking with Jesus from the baptism of John. This was one man that was in the background and yet he had a throne connected to a specific tribe. And the man had to wait upon God to come and bring him up. Now you can, we can go, we can come to our message here. Wait upon God. He controls the seasons. This man, there was a prophecy about him. God had spoken something about him. And this position was completely known. And when Judas is missing a lot of things with the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus would rather rebuke Judas Iscariot, then replace him with this man that had a scripture in the Bible. And this man didn't know there was a scripture written about him. We can read together that scripture with you if you don't mind. If you go to the book of uh, Psalms, we are going to the book of Psalms 109 verse 8. And I want you to get the prophecy of this man called Matthias. And yet he's right in the background. He's not imagining. He's not complaining. And God has chosen him. And God has already given him an authority and a power in the prophecy that is going to unfold. But yet this man is in the background. He's sort of like shut up completely. Jesus is not mentioning him. No one mentions him. But yet he's a man of authority. Perhaps we need to read the scripture so that we get to what I'm talking about. Uh, Psalms 109, the whole of it, is committed to Judas Iscariot, and if you like, the entire scripture is committed to the future Antichrist. But verse 8 says, when, when, when David saw the position, the behavior 
of Judas Iscariot. The Bible says, uh, David said, let his days be few and let another take his office. So this man, this scripture specifically, speaks about Matthias. And when Jesus Christ is choosing the 12 apostles, he already understands this man Matthias. This is not his time. Yet, he's somewhere in the scriptures. I want you to pick the hope from the scriptures that you could be somewhere in the background and no one is hearing about you. But God is working on the both ends of the stick and is going to take something major to happen in the kingdom of God for Matthias to find his position. If God will give me grace, I want to talk about Joseph, talk about Mordecai, and talk about Esther in the same line of thought. This Matthias, he is not mentioned anywhere in the scripture by the Lord Jesus Christ, yet he exists in the Psalms. These Psalms that uh, David has spoken in Psalms 109 is actually messianic because it is talking about the betrayal of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he's talking about Judas Iscariot. And then the Bible says, let his office, the book of Acts says, let his bishopric be taken by another one. The another one here, his name had not been given, but another one we find after they have chosen Matthias, we realize this another one was Matthias. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. He never mentioned Matthias. We are only getting in verse 21, Acts chapter 1, verse 21. For the first time is now when we are hearing, so you mean this man was among the people? He was there in the days of John the Baptist? He was there when Jesus Christ was choosing the 12? And Jesus specifically left him out because he wanted this man to anoint. He wanted this man to keep on waiting until his time will come. And that was left out so that today, for you that is waiting for a promise, waiting for your time before God, this scripture to you, it is meant. Matthias is standing here and Judas Iscariot is said that the Bible calls him a thief, stealing from the treasury of the church. And Jesus Christ does not replace him. He waits the fever to run the course. Matthias is right there when Judas Iscariot is feeling bad. Because someone is taking a very expensive oil, anointing the head of Jesus, and uh, Judas is scared to say, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you wasting this oil on the Lord Jesus Christ? Perhaps this would have been sold and the money used to, to, to give to the beggar. Then Jesus speaks and says, beggars are here or the poor, as it were, are here with you always. I'm not here with you all the time. She's doing that against my burial. And this is a wrong person right here, occupying a position that was not rightly his. He would not run the entire course. This man will not even go up to Pentecost. He will not even go up to the promise that is written in Matthew uh, 19.28. He won't go up to the time to sit on the throne. He won't even have the authority, yet he has eaten with Jesus Christ. But the person who is going to get the Holy Ghost, who is supposed to be projected and put, in the office of authority, he is right in the back. No one is mentioning him. Peter doesn't mention him. John doesn't mention him. He doesn't appear anywhere until shortly before the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes down in the book of Acts chapter 2. Just shortly before the Holy Ghost comes, people are now running and they have to hurry up. Because this man must, must be in office before the Holy Spirit comes. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in the book of Acts chapter 2, it was to empower these people to be able to do administration, administration uh, to, 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 to do the work of administration to the 12 tribes. And if the Holy Spirit came, minus this man being chosen by way of lords, then we would have one tribe. Call it the tribe of Zebulun. I'm not saying the tribe of Zebulun. Call it the tribe of Naphtali. They're losing because a man who was supposed to administer has not been anointed by the Holy Ghost. So what did these people do? They had to run very fast. It was more of a time of emergency to fill in the right person who will receive the Holy Spirit and run the entire course up to the very time Jesus Christ gives them the throne to sit. And that will be found in the scriptures that is found in future in the book of Matthew chapter 25 
But why was Matthias right in the background while there was a scripture that spoke about him? Are you a person also waiting upon something? And the purpose of this is to give you an instruction to listen and understand. There are people that mean so much before God, but their season has not yet come. And you could be among some of the people. That's why I'm choosing a person whose responsibility, he had a power. He had a jurisdiction. He had a, a dominion. He had an area he needed to preside over. But at the very onset, when other people are being chosen, he isn't mentioned. When Peter is being chosen, he isn't mentioned. When Andrew, Andrew goes in the meetings of the Lord Jesus, having been the uh, disciples of John, he sees something. He has him mesmerized. He calls Simon Peter. Simon Peter, Jesus Christ, picks the, 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 the secret of his heart. This is the son of Jonah. And these people came in. Some of them like uh, Matthew. He was just told, come follow me. And he followed. But this man is calling is going to be very traumatic. God is going to overturn things in the kingdom to bring this man in his position. Could it be what God could be doing? And the people that I've put down here that I want to share with you before my time runs out, it is because these are the same people that God had to do something major to bring these people in their position of authority. If you've been waiting, I want to give an example. Maybe your calling may not be like that of, of Matthew. I'm just talking about that. Matthew, come follow me, and Matthew follows. But this man, he's right in the background. The Bible tells us he was among 120. One thing that strikes me is, this man, when Jesus Christ died, and the hope of Israel and the rest of the apostle was shattered. The man also ran with the rest of the other people. But anytime there was a hope in the church, he came. Anytime there was a gathering, he came. He did not come and he's petting and he's petting because no one had spoken to him. He didn't come saying, now today is going to be my day. If it doesn't happen today, it will happen tomorrow. It didn't work for him like that. He just came because this man loved the Lord. And this moment when he's coming, he hears his names being mentioned. He hears Simon Peter mentioning Barabbas and mentioning him. And then the brothers are praying. He didn't realize this was the time. His prophecy was coming to be alive. Whatever he's been waiting for, was, he was just an ordinary believer, just following the Lord Jesus Christ, not trying to say, I'm going to feel uh, uneasy, uh, I'm among them, I've followed John the Baptist, I've followed the Lord Jesus, I've not even seen what this one has translated to. But there was a time when God had to overturn things to bring this man in. Praise the Lord. There is a time when God has to do things, major things, to bring a shift in the spirit. There has to be a shift in the spirit. Some people, their calling is not ordinary. Their calling is connected to huge change, huge shift in the things of God. Will you keep on waiting? Will you have the kind of patience this man waited from the time of John the Baptist, maybe six months, to the time of the three years of the Lord Jesus, plus perhaps one year, not one year, a few days that followed in the choosing of the apostle. This man had waited upon God that controls the seasons. He had not been alerted. He had not been warned and told, brother, just keep on following the Lord. Keep on following the Lord. Maybe your day is coming. No, this man out of his own heart, he loved the Lord and continued. And then the time came. God overturned. He did something major. I want to say this. Judas has carried the position he held was not his. The right person was Matthias. Someone who is disagreeing with that, you can write to me. And uh, I, I'll show you by the scriptures. Paul is not mentioned. The gospel of Paul is different from this gospel. The calling of Paul was completely different. But I'm talking about these people. I'm talking about the man who came to replace. According to the scriptures, Matthias came for one purpose. To replace who? Judas Iscariot. And how come this man was not among them? That's how God works. The reason the Bible tells us, teach me your ways, show me your path. Sometimes you have to understand how God works, how God fails to speak about Matthias. And it looks like Matthias has been ignored. Yet he has a scripture. Judas, I had a scripture, yeah? but the scripture talks about his overthrow. Peter never had a scripture. James never had a scripture. John never had a scripture. But this man, Matthias, had a scripture. He had a scripture, but he was not among the first one. The people who never had a scripture. 
They were chosen. But this man who had a scripture was never chosen until shortly before. They will hurry up. When your time come, they will hurry up. I want you to believe it. When your time, when your season has come, God is going to overturn things and they are going to hurry up. I like when they have to hurry up when your season has come, like Jephthah. I'm just trying to open this for you to be able to, your mind to open up, for you to go into the scriptures and find out some other things. I want to go straight to a man called Joseph because my time is up. I don't want to take so much time. I'm remaining with like four minutes or five or so. There was a man by the name Joseph. Joseph, when he went in Egypt, I don't want to deal with, because in the previous services we've dealt with Joseph, Joseph in the house of uh, his father, Joseph in Potiphar's house, Joseph in uh, prison house, and Joseph in Pharaoh's house. But I want to point out something about this man. When this man was moving from one house to a house, he had the dreams of his youth, and all of us do. All of us get to a place, you have a dream of your youth, something you want to become, something you are praying that takes place. And then the old age is getting in and you are like, I don't think, I just have to drop. I want to tell you, God does not forget. God may bring in at the last hours and you'll be the most important stone in the building. Without you, they cannot move. Without Matthias, they cannot move. Judas, J Joseph, has been taken to Egypt. And right there in Egypt, he moves in those houses. Then he goes into the prison house. Chapter 40, the last verse, tells us after the kindness of Joseph to the butler and the beggar or the cup bearer, he forgot, the Bible says, he forgot about Joseph. And God never forgot. He forgot all about Joseph, although he promised Joseph. And that's what also sometimes disturbs us, that your kindness that you've extended to some people is taken for granted and left to imagination. And you're wondering, all my kindness? This person left me in this position? It is me who put him where he is, and he promised to go and uh, rest pocket, and he has not done it? Joseph kept quiet. He didn't complain, but like any other human being, he was complaining, how on earth would this man forget me after he promised me? And the Bible says it took actually two years. Verse 23 says, that is Genesis 40, 23. Yet did not the chief butler or butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. He promised to speak good about Joseph. But the question is, the position of Joseph was not going to be given or going to be influenced in the earlier stages when the butler escaped or was released from prison. God was going to overturn. He was going to do something in the kingdom that will bring Joseph in his position. What is it he was going to do? Here is a thing. And it came to pass at the end of the two full years that the Pharaoh dreamed and behold, he stood by the river. And after Pharaoh has dreamed, Verse 12 says, And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged. Now this man is connecting, it has taken the dream of Pharaoh to trigger the memory of this man so that this man remembers Joseph, so that Joseph comes in his position. Wow. So it, the, God had to move in the throne. God had to make sure there is a, a dream that needs to be interpreted. And that was the right season that God had been working on the both ends of the stick to bring Joseph in his place. Joseph wouldn't have come out of the prison earlier than necessary. Even if this butler spoke for him, it couldn't have what? Verse 9 says, Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my fall this day. Pharaoh was angry with his servant and put him in prison in the captain of the guardhouse, both me and the chief beggar. And we dreamed a dream in one night, and we, and he, we dreamed each man according to his interpretation of the dream. And there was... Someone is going to speak well about you. God has not forgotten. God is going to work on something major. We see in the, the days of Jesus, something major took place. 
In the days of Joseph, something major took place for him to come to his position. God does not forget. If that was one of the words you can put there, I'm talking about wait upon God. He controls the seasons. Wait upon God, he controls the seasons. And the person who may be there today may not be the right person. You are the right person. I want you to believe in all your heart. But don't do anything about it. Look at your qualification. Look at the favor of God upon your life. And relax. Wait upon God. He controls the season. Those of you who have been waiting for stuff. People have come and look they are overtaking you. Yet like this man here. He had a scripture. Wait upon God. He controls the season. Finally, I'm not going to Esther. I want to go to a man by the name Mordecai. Mordecai used to sit in the gate of the king. And Mordecai did not realize he belonged to the throne. He only had his own conviction. He only believed, I don't have to bow under a man by the name Haman. He did not realize, actually, the position of Haman was his. Until God did something major in the kingdom. There was something this man had done. And he was not waiting to be rewarded. And at that time death was hanging over this man. It is the king that brought the man and saved the man. He had nothing else. He had done something good. And that day Haman wanted to kill him because he was an obstacle. Any person that wants to take your position... Once you take your blessing, he won't take it. The Bible doesn't teach us that. It shows the people who want to take the position of others. They were actually overturned and the right person come. I want to believe today you are the right person in your waiting. You are the right person waiting upon God to do something. Can we just maybe read this scripture together with you? And then we close. We look for a place to close. I'm just resting. The book of Esther chapter 6. It talks about how this man Mordecai actually could have died. And that day the king could not sleep. Mordecai never realized there was a position another man was occupying. The same thing with Joseph. The same thing with the Matthias. And the same thing is happening, of course, with Esther and Vashti. But of course, that's not who you're dealing with. We are dealing with a man called Mordecai. A man that belonged, had a position. But he was right in the background, not doing anything about it. But God was controlling the season. Wait upon your time. Paul tells in the book of Romans, wait upon your ministry. Don't rush things. Even if you have got a dry scripture that talks about you, wait for your time. Wait for the season. God is working. God has the, the triggers. He knows what he's doing. Let me finish by saying, uh, Esther chapter 8, it says, And on that day did the king, Ahasuerus, give the house of Haman, the Jew's enemy, unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the, the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. I had someone saying it's called Mordecai. Gave it to Mordecai, and Esther sent Mordecai, over the house of Haman. I had a, I've got a, an audio Bible. So the person was reading, he said Mordecai. I said, oh, not Mordecai. Okay, let me call it Mordecai because you know Mordecai. Can you imagine the ring? Oh, mine. I don't have mine here. The ring that Haman was wearing was not his. It was the ring of Mordecai. Oh, praise the Lord. Because you are where you are. And there is a person right there who seems to have overtaken you. He hasn't overtaken you. God is working on the season. Wait upon the Lord. Your ring will be put before all. And Mordecai had to stand there waiting upon his promise. Waiting upon his blessing. Waiting for your time of appointment. David waited for 20 more years. From the time he was anointed to the time he became the king of Israel. If you count all those years, it was 20 years before every one of the Israelites bowed before David, let the king leave. The moment of waiting is not a bad moment. It's a moment of preparation. God prepared Matthias. He prepared Joseph. He prepared Mordecai. He prepared Esther. And he's doing the preparation today. God does not change. That is how he brings his people in their destiny, their placement, and their position. You love the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Wait upon the Lord. He's controlling the season. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, what a great time you've given us today, Lord, to know how to wait upon you. Father, it's not our efforts. It's not our wishes. It's not he that runneth or willeth. It's the Lord that showeth mercy. That is universal. Father, there are many people, Lord, listening to me today that have waited upon their promise. Some of them, Father, they know they qualify for something, but it looks like it's taking longer. Heavenly Father, today may they be strengthened in the inner man. To be able to understand there are people in the Bible that you are wondering why they keep on pursuing after God. Why the Matthias was our main subject matter, kept on following the apostles. His position was among them. It was hiding. It was not yet revealed. He kept on waiting and did that very time, shortly before the Holy Ghost came. Heavenly Father, it was a state of emergency. Someone had to take his position. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for your people today who are listening in, oh Father, that it will be a state of emergency. God, may you overturn things. Give them the patience, oh God, that will come and occupy the areas of position, the areas of authority, be it in this world and wherever it is, oh Father. We thank you because of the example you've given us in the Bible. From this we get admonition. From this we get instruction, Lord. May you do it for the glory of your own name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.